Oh, hello. I didn't know you were there. You just caught me planing. Anyway, I'm going to teach you on how I plane. Hello to everyone, here we have a uh, selection of the pieces that we need to assemble a hand plane. What I have here, uh, this is a, a Wood River plane, this is a four and a half. Um, so I'm just going to teach you a little bit about the functionality of the plane. Um, obviously here we have the sole, um, we have the frog and the adjuster wheel at the back. So I'm going to teach you a little about uh, the certain components that we need to assemble the plane. We have the iron. Uh, this iron is sharpened to 35 degrees. Um, obviously, you can pick your own uh, preference on your angle. Here we have a uh, chip breaker with the adjustment screw. Uh, so what I'm going to teach you now is how to assemble these two items. Uh, bevel is pointing downwards. Obviously, there's a bevel down plane. And we're just going to put it in the little slot, um, as you can see here. And we're just going to spin the blade 90 degrees until we can line them up. And then we're going to push the chip breaker within about a mil or a sixteenth of an inch towards the end of the blade. So here we are, we want to get a nice flat headed screwdriver. Uh, we're just going to cinch this down just so the chip iron doesn't move. So the next step of assembly um, of your plane uh, is first obviously making sure the frog is parallel with the opening of the throat of the plane. And obviously making sure the plane sole is nice and flat. Make sure all your edges are deburred around the edge. And here we have the adjustment for the frog. Uh, it's just two screws at the back of the frog. Or if you have a Stanley, you'll find your two screws located on the top of the frog. OK, now, so it's time to um, locate the iron inside the plane, uh, making sure the tip breaker is on the top. We are now going to angle the plane so it's pretty much level um, and we're going to locate the screw at the back as you can see here in this little uh, recess on the frog. And you'll hear it click once it locates and there we go. It's a good idea to check the adjuster on the back. Um, this will obviously make sure that the blade is located in that slot and the blade is nice and firm. So what we have here, here is the lever cap. Now this lever cap is designed um, to put front pressure on the leading edge of the blade and to hold the blade firmly in place. So we can apply some lateral adjustment to the plane. So what I'm going to do now, let's put the lever cap in the plane. Now I'm going to try and push it down with one finger. Am I able to do that? So we're just going to loosen it off a little bit. Try it again. Still a little bit too tight. So I'm just going to back off just a little bit more. And there we go. You should hear a nice clip. So now we have the lever cap firmly in place. Now give the blade a little wiggle just to make sure that it's not moving. And just check the adjuster. There should be some tension on the adjuster as well. Um, and there we are, we're all ready. So now let's move on to the next stage. So now it's time to set this plane up. So what we are going to do now is now we are going to flip the plane over so we can look directly down the sole. And we also want to get a nice light background behind the plane. We want to look directly down the sole. So we can try and make this blade level with the sole. 
So just use the adjusters, adjust, using the adjusters to lower the blade until it's parallel with the sole. As you can see, I'm a little bit heavy on the right there. So I'm just going to adjust it again until it's nice and parallel with that sole. And if the blade's sticking out on one side, move the adjuster towards the heavy side and vice versa. So now I'm just now retracting the blade so I can bring the blade below the level of the sole. So you'll see it start disappearing nice and level to the sole. And here we go. We are pretty much ready to start planing. Okay, so now we are start ready to plane in with the plane. Now what we're going to do now is we're just going to run it on a piece of wood. Obviously make sure that you put wax the sole. And we're just going to double check just to make sure there's no blade protruding from the bottom of the sole. I'm now going to start um, turning the um, adjuster at the back of the plane clockwise to make the blade to start to protrude from the sole till we can start taking the shaving. Now as you can see the shaving does look pretty good but I can see it is heavy on one side and I'm just going to lift the shaving out of the plane just to inspect the shaving a little bit further and as you can see on one side of the shaving it's a little bit more defined than the other side of the shaving as we can see on this side it's a little bit fluffy. So now it's time to go back to the plane to start making the adjustments. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wind back the blade. So we're going to take less of the wood. And this is going to highlight the high side of the blade. And as you can see in the mouth, we have a divine shaving and it's high on the right hand side. So now we've identified uh, which side of the plane is a little bit heavy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a small adjustment. Now we're only talking micron level here. So I'm now going to pull the adjustment towards the heavy side. So you can move the adjustment. Or what you can do is just put your finger um, and your thumb over the blade. Or sometimes you can put your thumb on top of it just to add a little bit more resistance. Uh, so you can make those tiny adjustments. So those adjustments have been now done. So I'm now going to take another shaving. And you can see I've gone a little bit too far. I've gone over to the other side of the plane, which means I need to move the uh, lever onto the other side. So towards the heavy side. And I'm now going to try and take a shaving. And you can see I'm not picking up a shaving at all. So what that means is I've obviously moved the heavy side and straightened it up. And now we're dead parallel with the sole and dead parallel with the wood below. Okay, so now we've defined flat. I'm now going to take a shaving. I'm going to make the blade come out a little bit more. And I've now picked up some more wood. And here we have a nice shaving right from the centre of the plane. With some nice fluffy edges on the side. It might also be a good idea when you start using your plane. Is to put some wax um, on the bottom of the plane. Just rub it along the plane uh, across the bottom. And you will reduce the friction when you take a cut. So there we go, everybody. That is how you set up a plane. Hello, here we are. Here we have a low angle number 62 plane. I'm just going to go through some of the basic functions on this plane. Uh, first of all, uh, it is a low angle. The second of all here, uh, we have the blade. Now this blade is uh, sharpened to 35 degrees. Really make sure that you do sharpen your blade to the highest grit level that you can. Uh, this one I believe is set up 35 degrees, uh, but you can set it to 55 degrees. Um, obviously just remember the higher you set the angle, the harder it would be to push the blade through the cut. 
and the higher the angle obviously will help with tear out uh, this is a lever cap uh, this is the screw lever cap it's a little bit different from its um, counterpart on the other plane i've just showed you um, this one here has the adjustment um, the harder you uh, tighten up the harder it will push down on the blade below Inside here we have the adjuster. Uh, this does obviously the lateral adjustment and the forward back adjustment uh, for the protrusion of the blade. Um, this is um, how the plane is adjusted. Now on the front of the plane, this front knob of the plane, uh, this is where we can open and close the mouth uh, using this brass material here, as you can see in the picture. So as you can see, uh, we are opening and closing the mouth. So here's a little demonstration on how you do that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it wide open now. So I'm just going to tighten the knob um, on the plane. So now we're going to start thinking about putting the blade inside the plane. Now, when you obviously put the blade inside the plane, uh, just uh, line everything up. Uh, watch out for this brass screw inside the plane. Uh, not to knock it, you just have to put it through this hole that's in the blade. Just be very gentle not to knock the edges. And we're just going to pick the first hole in the blade. Now sometimes you can use the second hole in the blade. It really depends on how you set it up. And John, me, you move it to the second hole when the blade gets a bit shorter. So what we're going to do now... Uh, we are now going to put the lever cap in the, the plane. So we're just going to push it in like so. And we're going to tighten it up with two fingers. I would say no more than two finger tight. So as you can see now, we have the lever cap in. The blade is in. So we're pretty much ready to start setting this plane up. Okay, so the next job on this plane now, uh, like we did on the other one, is just to sight along the sole. Uh, using the adjustment, uh, the adjustment wheel at the back and the lever cap, just loosen it off ever so slightly. Leave a little bit of tension on that lever cap, um, just so you can start um, moving the blade left and right. Now, the same principle applies. Always um, push the knob towards the higher side um, of the blade. So same principle as the other plane I've just demonstrated to you. And we're just going to eyeball it just to get the blade straight to the sole. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to lay the plane um, in front of me. I'm just going to undo this knob at the front of the plane. And I'm just going to look down the throat of the plane. And I'm just going to close the mouth. Just tighten it up just so you can see a little bit of light through it. So as demonstrated here. There we go. I don't know if you can see that. We just see a little bit of light there. And there we go. And we're pretty much ready to plane. Okay, so now it's time to plane. What I'm going to do now is I'm just running the um, the plane back on the wood. Um, what I'm listening for is the sound of the plane. Just to hear if the blade is protruding. Sometimes you can just drag the plane back and you can hear the blade scraping a little bit more than it should. So I'm now just going to back the blade off ever so slightly. So it's counter cockrise out, cockrise for in. So I'm just checking the blade just to make sure that I can hear the right tone as I'm dragging the plane back. And now I'm going to take a shaving. So as you can see, the shaving is coming out of one side of the plane. I'm now just going to inspect that shaving and I can see it's a little bit thin on the inside edge which means it's heavier on the side of the plane. So I'm going to pop me uh, plane back on the wood again. I'm going to undo the adjuster. Keep some tension on it. Don't undo it all the way. And I'm just going to pull the adjuster towards the heavy side. So we're just going to do that now. I'm going to pull it over just a smidgey. I'm going to do that back up again. I'm going to do a draw back. And as you can hear, you can't hear that plane anymore. You can't hear that blade. So what we've done is, is the plane was out 
it was touching on this side taking a shaving okay and what we've done is is we now we've leveled it up and now we're not taking a shaving anymore okay but it's just above so now what we do is now we just give it some more blade so just a few just a little turn at a time do a little draw back you can hear it you don't have to take a shaving to 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 find out how far this blade is coming out just do a drawback you can hear it so what i'll do is I'm going to give it some more blade I can just about hear that now can you so if i move that forward as you can see we've now taken a shaving slightly from the other side but we're almost almost dead center so it seems like i've gone a little bit too far so i'm just going to give it a little bit of a push now some of these planes you can use a little hammer on it so I'm now going to pull that back. I can hear, I can, I'm going to take a large shaving if I take a drink. Because it's quite a loud noise. So I'm just going to pull the shaving back. Takes a little bit of a mess in these ones. They're not as easy as its counterpart. Let's take a shaving. There we go. As you can see, I've taken a defined shaving. From, the, from both sides. And that is how you set up a low angle. A little suggestion with every plane that you show use, always use wax. Put some wax on that sole, you'll finally reduce it. Reduces the friction between the wood and the plane and you'll be able to feel that cutting edge very easily. Okay, thanks for uh, staying with me for so long. Well, here we have a Wood River five and a half. I'm just going to talk about some of the general uh, troubleshooting problems that you might run into. Um, it will, this will apply to all uh, planes. Uh, here we have a Stanley number four. Um, pretty much all the same functions on this one as well. Okay, so some of the problems that I see uh, generally with a lot of people that use hand planes is their blade is not sharp. So the first thing you want to do is obviously making sure that your blade is sharp from tip to tip. And make sure you've got a nice polished strip along the edge. And that applies also for the bevel side of the plane as well. So now we're going to check for some nicks in the cutting edge. Uh, just run your nail across the edge. And you'll feel those bumps. So also we have a chip breaker here as well. So what I'm going to do is just run for you through some of the general problems uh, that you'll find with your chip breaker. It needs to mate the back of the iron needs to remain completely flat. No gaps between the cutting edge and the chip breaker. So what you're looking for is a nice fit between them both. So to achieve the straight edge on the back of your chip breaker, just get yourself a thousand grit diamond stone, something that you know is completely flat. Get yourself a blade, Put it on the far end. And then just very gently rub it across and you'll find you'll straighten up the back of the chip breaker. Okay, so now we've defined a sharp iron, a flat chip breaker. Now we want to look at the lever cap. Now this lever cap is designed to hold it down to the chip breaker and onto the iron. So I'm just going to assemble it now just to show you on how it goes into the plane. So any discrepancy in any of these materials would cause the blade to push down on one corner or the other. So I'm just now going to show you what I've done to the lever cap. As you can see right on that far tip, I have now polished the edge of this one. Uh, you only need to do this to a thousand grit and make sure it's completely flat. Okay, the next problem we can experience is making sure that the frog location is located in the correct position. Now this frog can go forward and back. As you can see on the back of this plane, we have two screws on the outer side, one in the middle, uh, that is obviously forward and back. Once you loosen those off, you don't have to take them out. 
And the objective of the game is, is we need to make sure that this frog is parallel with the mouth inside. We also want to make sure that the frog is also in a position. So it'll accept blade. And if I just hold that there, there's enough room for the blade to retract and come out. We also want to make sure that the frog is in a position for the application of the plane. If you want to take large shavings or very fine shavings, which will position the frog forward and back. Okay, so one of the other common problems that I have seen before is we need to make sure that this screw on the back of the iron, which connects to the chip breaker, is completely tight. Now this screw is a, needs to be tight uh, due to the lateral movement that you would put in to the chip breaker, which will in transition in mo moving the blade forward and out of the plane. So here's some of the troubleshooting. I've now put um, my planes back together again. Um, if you like what you see, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And I will see you all on the next one.